Hi, church family. Hey, thank you for joining, being with me this evening. I'm excited to teach to you from 2 Timothy. It's, it really is one of my favorite books of the whole Bible. So I'm excited to share some from you from that. Let me share a few quick announce, announcements. Uh, the Bible reading plan for this coming week, we're going to read Philemon, which is just one little chapter, and then Hebrews 1 through 6 and Psalm 119. I just encourage you, let's just continue to, to take this journey together daily, weekly. And then um, on October the 17th, we're going to try again for our combined outdoor service. We It got rained out this past Sunday. So we're hoping for a beautiful fall day on October the 17th. And at 9.30 a.m., instead of an early service, we're going to have donuts and hot chocolate, coffee, hot cider. So just a great time of fellowship. Again, hopefully on a beautiful fall morning. And then at 1045, we'll have a combined service and uh, just would, would love for you to bring some chairs. We have some seating, but it's it really helps if, if a lot of people bring lawn chairs to that service. And uh, and that's it for announcements. I'm teaching from, uh, again, Second Timothy and excited to spend some time here with you. So let's jump right in the, the first two verses uh, from Second Timothy, chapter one. Let me read them to you. Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus to Timothy, my dear son. So I just wanted to read those verses just to make you aware of the whole purpose of this letter. Paul has written a lot of letters that are New Testament books. I could go through a long list. Most of them are written to churches. However, a few are written to individuals, and that's what we see here. Paul is writing a letter to Timothy. And uh, we, we learn that Timothy is a young Christian leader, a young pastor. Uh, he's a young man that Paul is mentoring, discipling, encouraging. So one question as I read through, um, well, well, before the question, I would just say, let's, let's look and see how Paul encourages Timothy, how he mentors him. And, uh, and, and let's ask the question, have we been mentored? Have we been discipled? By, by somebody who's further along in the faith than we are. And if you have, I want you to think about that a little bit, the impact that that's made on you. And if you haven't, I would just say it's not too late. Um, you can always reach out to somebody who, who has strong faith in Christ and, and uh, just see if, if that could develop into a friendship and possibly that they could be a mentor, a spiritual leader, and a spiritual encourager for you. And the next thing I'd want to ask is, have you considered reaching out into the life of somebody who's younger in the faith and being a spiritual mentor and encouragement um, in their life? I, I think that one of the best ways that we can grow in our walk with Jesus is to be mentored and encouraged by someone further along in the faith, but also to then turn to the next generation and, and be a mentor and a support to somebody else. And ideally, um, that we're not always able to do this, but, but a, a great thing to happen for all of us is if we had somebody who was mentoring us spiritually, and at the very same time, we had somebody that we were mentoring. Um, I think that's a really great model for discipleship. So um, let's continue to kind of look at the relationship between Paul and Timothy and uh, move further into the passage here. So we're, we're beginning here in the second part of verse 3. And again, this is the letter that Paul has written. He says, as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears. I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. So the first thing that we just see here is Paul was praying very faithfully for Timothy, that uh, that's one role of someone who would be a spiritual mentor, a spiritual encourager, is that um, we, would, we would really spend time in prayer for the person that we are trying to spiritually support. And we see that right there in, in that part of verse three is night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. In other words, he wasn't just occasionally lifting a little you know, four word prayer for Timothy, but he was praying for him at night and during the day. And it was a pretty constant thing that, uh, it, and that, that obviously speaks when we pray for somebody, it, it communicates that we really do care about them, that we are taking time out of our lives to talk to God on their behalf. And so it's a very loving act. And we see that that's one of the ways that Paul was mentoring 
Timothy, um, it shows how much he cared for him, is that he was praying for him. And then in verse 4, it says, recalling your tears. And so uh, apparently the last time they were together, when Paul had to transition and, and leave Timothy, that uh, Timothy cried. And so in our group on Sunday night, we talked a little bit about this and we don't know exactly why Timothy cried. You know, there's some different thoughts and ideas that, that we shared. Um, but, but likely part of it is Paul was really important to him. He was a spiritual father to Timothy. And, and so the fact that he was leaving was, was upsetting for him. He was leaving. He, he was uh, losing contact with somebody that he really cared about. And keep in mind, this was in New Testament times, so they weren't able to be in regular contact like we are when they're separated by distance. The other thing is Paul had faced so much persecution already, and it was just a part of his life. So maybe Timothy was afraid, this is the last time I will ever see Paul, because it's very possible that, that he's going to be martyred for his faith. So, But again, it shows that there was a real bond of love and friendship. Paul was a mentor. Timothy was a young pastor. And when Paul left, he cried. And, uh, and we continue to see the, the depth of their relationship when Paul affirms Timothy, says, I long to see you again. Um, when I see you, that, that I would be filled with joy. In other words, he's letting Timothy know, you really matter to me. I care about you. I'm praying for you. I remember your tears, and I really want to see you again. And, and when I do, it's just going to bring a lot of joy. And so uh, there, there's just a lot of affirming language here. Um, then let's look in verse 5. In that phrase, it says, I am reminded of your sincere faith. And I think this is a great example of a spiritual mentor that, that, that Paul is again affirming Timothy. In other words, I see something real in you, Timothy, something that is genuine, a genuine faith. In other words, I believe in you, Timothy. I believe in your faith. I believe in your walk with God. I, I believe that God has good things in store for you. And, and I want you to know that. Um, and, and that could have been very encouraging to Timothy. Who knows what Timothy was going through? Um, he was upset when Paul left. I don't know how long they had been separated. He was now a young pastor. He may have been dealing with conflict. He could have been struggling with, um, with discouragement, uh, depression. Maybe he was having spiritual struggles. Maybe he was doubting his own faith uh, from the standpoint of just not feeling very good about himself. And, and here Paul comes with this letter and just says, I see something real and sincere and genuine in you, Timothy. And, and that's just a, a great word of affirmation. He also spoke about Timothy's mom and grandmother, that they had a sincere faith. Your grandmother has a great faith. Your mother has a great faith. And I'm just convinced that that faith also lives in you. So we just continue to see affirmation here. And there's also um, to, to only strengthen the bond. Not only did Paul have a relationship with Timothy, but it sounds like he was well connected with his family. Um, and, and so he even had a, a bond and a connection um, beyond Timothy. Th this makes me think, uh, I remember being, this is before I felt a call to preach. I felt called to preach at age 15. I want to say I was maybe 13 years old, 14. I had a Sunday school teacher at my home church. His name's Mike Wurzfeld. He made a, a big impact on me. He probably doesn't realize how big of an impact, but he would talk to us about old school, Old Testament Bible stories in, uh, in Sunday school, and he had so much passion for God's Word, and I enjoyed hearing him tell a story from, from the Bible. And there was one day that uh, I, I just knew that he cared about me, but I don't know what was going on. I feel like he confronted a few of us, but, but I think it was me in particular. He pulled me aside and he said, you know, Kevin, your attitude stinks and who knows what was going on in my life. But um, I, I probably was, you know, exhibiting a bad attitude in the youth group. And so Mike pulled me aside and said, your attitude stinks. Uh, but he followed that up by, by basically saying that he felt like I had so much potential, so much potential. So he corrected me, and it sounds like, well, that's an awful thing to say to a 13-year-old. But honestly, it didn't offend me. It, and, and I was easily offended back in the day, but I just knew that Mike cared about me. I really knew that. And so when he said that to me, it didn't offend me, and he was right. You know, my attitude was not in a good place. But then I, I just remembered feeling inspired that he saw something in me. Um, that, that I had some kind of potential spiritually. And, uh, and so um, I just remember the role that he had, that the, how he affirmed me. 
how he encouraged me. And a big part of it was, I, I, eventually I was called to preach and I continued to move forward down the, the, the road toward education and all of those things. And I just had always felt like Mike Wordsfield believed in me and uh, was an encouragement to me. So I just want us to be aware of, of how much it can impact us to have one person really believe in us. And so uh, it would be a great thing for you to have someone in your life who believes in you, encourages you. And if you can turn around and find someone um, to encourage and pour your life into and really believe in them, to see their faith, their sincere faith, and encourage them in that, I think that will bless them more, you know, far beyond what we ever realize. Well, let's continue. So now we're going to look at verse 6. And, and these 6 and 7, these are great verses that have um, encouraged me many, many times. So verse 6 says, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So, so here Paul is now inspiring Timothy, um, inspiring him to fan into flame the gift of God. I believe those words did inspire Timothy because they've inspired me many times. Um, the, the idea that, that, hey, we have to take some ownership, some responsibility. We don't always feel like we're in a great place spiritually, but Paul is saying, fan into flame that spiritual fire. Do what you have to do to get your spiritual life in a good place. And specifically, he's talking about the gift of God, the, the, the spiritual gifts, the gifts for ministry. Fan into flame, develop those. Do what you have to do so that you can really make an impact for God in this world. And so... He's inspiring, instructing Timothy here. And then I want you to see in verse 7, it says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. And we just stop there for a moment. That For whatever reason, it seems that Timothy struggled a little bit with, with fear, with timidity in ministry. And again, he was a young pastor. I'd say that all young pastors have had to overcome fears. And, and we continue to have to overcome um, you know, just the desire to be loved and liked and, and, and maybe some timidity, some fears that we have to deal with. And so what we see here is that, that Paul is, is correcting him, gently correcting him and reminding him, look, Timothy, you know, God, God's calling you to lead with courage. And the, the, the Holy Spirit within you is not a spirit that brings about fear. It's not a spirit that brings about timidity. Um, but the Holy Spirit within you is, is brings about power and love and self-discipline. And so he gently corrects him that, that look, we, we can't walk in fear. We can't be timid. Uh, but he's also, at the same time he's correcting him, he's also inspiring him. I, I think he's giving him a vision uh, for his future, like a ministry vision for what he can be, which is a great role of a mentor to inspire us and, and, and help us to see what could be. And, and so he's saying to Timothy, the Holy Spirit in you, it's not a spirit that, that makes us timid. Rather, the Holy Spirit of God within you gives you power, gives you, fills you with love, and gives you self-discipline. I think those are three great words that we can consider as, as we think about how am I going to make an impact in this world? How am I going to make an impact in my family? How can I do ministry for God in this world? Well, we, we want to have the power of the Holy Spirit that, that enables us to, to, to have strength and boldness um, and, and deal with things, even in the spiritual realm. And, and of course, that the Holy Spirit would, would make us loving, that we would just continue to grow more and more and more loving. That's a prayer that I have for myself. And, and I, you, you guys know me. So, some of you have known me for years and years. I'm not always the, the most loving. I'm not always the kindest. But I've asked God to help me in that area over the years, and I really believe he has, that, that we want to be people of love and kindness and tenderness, and, and then that the Holy Spirit would give us self-discipline. That motivates me. I, I believe it motivated Timothy in the day. Again, I've read this book many times over the years, and it has motivated me many times that I want to serve God in power, I want to serve God in love, and I want to serve God in a way that I have self-discipline, um, that I take my responsibilities for the kingdom of God very seriously. So we see this here. If we just kind of think back on everything I've just shared, the role of a mentor that Paul gently corrected Timothy. He believed in him. He saw genuine faith in him. He affirmed him. He inspired him to do great things 
for God's kingdom. He also reminded him of who he is in Jesus, about the Holy Spirit within him, and, uh, and, and just gave him this, this vision of, of what could be um, as, as he serves the Lord in, uh, in power, boldness, in love, and self-discipline. So a great example for us. A few other verses I want to share real quickly, and then we'll pray. We're going to move now to chapter 2, so 2 Timothy 2, verse 9. And it just says, For which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. And so I just share that verse. It's clear from that verse and others that Paul is writing from prison. So I just want to encourage you today. Sometimes we feel like I'm just overwhelmed. I'm struggling. I'm hurting. I don't think I can mentor anybody else. I don't think I can help inspire, kind of pour my life into somebody else. I would just say to you that Paul was stuck in prison, suffering. Could have been angry. Could have been bitter. Could have been, why, God, why? Um, but no, he set his own needs aside and focused on the needs of Timothy and wrote him this beautiful letter that not only encouraged Timothy then, but has encouraged many for hundreds and hundreds of years. Again, in my personal life, has encouraged me a bunch. So if Paul can be a mentor in prison, then I think that we can make an impact in people's lives, even if we're going through some tough times, which I know many of us are. And then finally, um, two verses in 2 Timothy chapter 4. This is the, the last chapter. Uh, Paul writes in verse 6, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Uh, Paul knows that he's about to die is what he's saying. My death is near. And uh, we believe from church history that Paul died the death of a martyr. And, uh, and so he knew that that was coming, nearing the end of his life, uh, facing a martyr's death. But even with those circumstances, he set his own concerns aside and he wrote this beautiful letter to Timothy. And he was a mentor. He was an inspiration. Um, he was an encouragement to Timothy. I would say it doesn't matter what condition we are in. It doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter what stage of life we are in. We all have the opportunity to reach out to somebody else and help them, encourage them, inspire them. Timothy, I'm sorry, Paul did that for Timothy, even as he was facing death. And then I just want us to take a note of Paul's declaration. Uh, what a powerful phrase. I think these are the words that, that uh, can be used often at, at, at the funeral of a really strong Christian believer. That, that we could say about them, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. That, that is the goal for all of us. And, and I think that that's another encouragement for Timothy. He's inspiring Timothy. He's saying, Timothy, I've gone through all these things and I've lived this life and I'm, and I'm, I'm at the very end of things. I'm, I'm nearing my death. I want you to know I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. That's the goal for all of us, that, that Paul is able to live his life and say that, and then he's able to inspire Timothy, who could also serve God, live his life, and that at the end of Timothy's life, I believe, I hope that he was able to say, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I've kept the faith. And brothers and sisters, I want us all to be able to say that, to someday be in the presence of God, and, and to have a peace, to really have a peace to know that with his help, with the grace of God, with the, the work of the Holy Spirit, that we could say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Brothers and sisters, not only do we want to arrive in that place, but we want to help as many people along the way, the next generation and the generation after that, that, that we pass our faith on, that we are a source of encouragement and inspiration, that, that we minister and, and help and strengthen um, the, the people around us, particularly the next generation, because we want them also. We think of our children. We, we, we think about the people that are so important to us. We want them also to someday stand in the presence of God and, and have a peace that they can say as a result of the work of God in their life, that they could say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. That's my prayer for you. That's my prayer for me. Um, let me pray with you this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the beauty of Scripture, for the passages here in 2 Timothy, and um, they are a blessing to us today, Lord. We see how Paul loved Timothy, mentored Timothy, corrected Timothy, inspired Timothy, was a spiritual father to him. 
And Lord, I just pray that their relationship would, would Lord, speak to us, encourage us. Lord, would you speak to us today as we listen to this? Maybe there is somebody that we need to reach out to that could be a spiritual parent for us, mentor us, speak into our lives, Lord. I pray you'd give us the, the faith and, 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 Lord, the determination to reach out and, uh, and ask somebody to come alongside and, and support us. And, Father, Lord, we would also think about the next generation. Um, how can we disciple and mentor and encourage and inspire and, and develop people? Um, would you lead us, Lord? Would you open up our minds, our hearts, that there may be somebody that we could also spiritually mentor? And Lord, I just read verse seven again, the words of the Apostle Paul. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Lord, we want that to be true of all of us, that we could say that, that we could stand in your presence someday and say those words. Lord, we love you. And uh, we just surrender our lives to you today and ask you to continue to just do good things daily developing us, making us more and more like Jesus, maturing us in this faith. We, we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, church family. I hope that you have a wonderful week and I hope to see you Sunday. Thanks for, for joining us on Wednesdays at seven. Again, just please continue to join us every Wednesday at seven. God bless you.